problem number nine. So I want to take these two functions, go to the calculator, put them in, use the Z trig window, and then see what happens. So I'll go to the y equals area. The first equation is sine x. I am in radian mode, which is where I want to be for graphing trig functions. The second one is cosine, parentheses, x minus pi over 2. Of course, I'll have the blue and the red to help me see what's going on. If you have a black and white version, if you arrow over to that line on the end, you can hit enter a couple of times and change the thickness of one of the graphs. That might help you. But I don't need to do that. I have the blue and the red, so I'm going to hit zoom and then choice 7 for Z trig. It's just a nice trig viewing window. The X tick marks count by pi over 2, and the Y tick marks count by 1. Let's click that and see what happens. So there's the blue one, and boy, you have to look fast because the red one came up and landed right on top of it. So that's obviously what happened. These ended up being exactly the same function. Let's take a look at the equations and see if we can figure out why that is. We know, of course, that the sine function and the cosine function are not the same picture, but take a look at this. Someone has taken the regular cosine function, which we draw as the vase, and taken it and moved it to the right, because of this minus sign, pi over two spaces. So in other words, this top point will end up here, and the middle point here, and the low point here, and so forth. So here's what you're going to have after you move that over. Well, if you fill in all the rest of the picture, you realize that what you have at that point is just the regular sine function. So we can say the graphs are the same because the cosine function was shifted pi over 2 to the right. Problem number 10, without using technology, we want to write down the coordinates of the five key points. I think all I need here really is a quick sketch. I'm looking at a reflected sign. That's the valley and the hill. The 4 is going to be the amplitude, so I know we're going up to 4 here and down to negative 4 there. There is no B value other than the 1, so that means I know the regular period is going to be maintained. And then we've got the valley and the hill, so I could draw those on. I'm not trying to make a complete picture here, but I think that's enough for me to write down my five key points. It looks like 0, 0 is where it starts. The second one, let's see, I didn't mark down the scale because I'm just doing scratch work. This would be pi, so wouldn't that other one be pi over 2? Looks like pi over 2 comma negative 4. And then you can see pi comma 0. The next one, let's see, I'm counting by pi over 2's. So half, one, three halves would be this one, three pi over two. Three pi over two, it looks like that goes with four, with the high point. And then the final one is two pi comma zero. So there's my five key points. In part B, I have a regular cosine, that is the vase. I can see there's no A other than one, so the amplitude is just going to be one. And let's see, this time there is a b value, so I should probably use that little formula, p equals 2 pi divided by b, to figure out what the period is of this function. Of course, dividing by 1 third is just the same as multiplying by 3. And so I'm going to end up with 6 pi as my period. I always want to know that value. I can figure out all the other ones so easily. Half of it would be 3 pi, half of 3 would be 3 halves, so 3 pi over 2. I'm counting by 3 halves, so 3 halves, 6 halves, 9 halves is what this one would be. 9 pi over 2 would be that third one. And then 12 pi over 2, which reduces to 6 pi. I'm doing regular cosine, that's the vase, so it starts at the top, and I can mark down my points. I don't really even need to connect the dots because I just want the five key points. Looks like 0, 1 is where it starts, followed by 3 pi over 2, 0. And then 3 pi is down there at the bottom, so 3 pi goes with the negative 1. 9 pi over 2 is back at the 0. And the last one is 6 pi back up at the top at the 1. And so there's my five key points. 
problem 11 goes the other direction. What if I know a couple of the key points? Can I write down the equation? I know the first two, so 0, 0 is the first one. And then that very next key point, that's a good one to know, pi over 7, comma 12. Now this is regular sine function. I know that that's the hill and the valley. So you can see here the start of that first hill right here. I should be able to figure out everything else from that. Knowing that first tick mark allows me to come down here to the period. I'm counting by pi over 7. So this would be 2 pi over 7, 3 pi over 7, 4 pi over 7. That's great because now I know my period. In fact, I can see that my amplitude is clearly 12. And I can see that my period is 4 pi over 7. That's really all I need to come up with the equation. I can use that little formula, b equals 2 pi divided by the period. In this case, that would be 2 pi divided by the 4 pi over 7. I'll just multiply by 7 over 4 pi, the reciprocal. And what am I going to get here? It looks like the pi's go, the 2 goes out 2. I think what I have left is 7 halves for my value of b. The amplitude is 12, which of course means my a is 12. It's just regular sine, and so I think I'm done. The equation would be y equals 12 for the amplitude sine of 7 halves x. And of course, if you wanted to, you could graph that in the calculator and make sure that it matches the information that we were given. Problem number 12 is very similar. Instead of having a regular sine, we have a reflected cosine, that's the ghost. My first key point is down here at 0, negative 20. And I know that reflected cosine starts at the bottom. My very next key point is here at 1 fifth 0. And so again, here's the start of that ghost. You could fill in the rest of the picture if you like. But really, all I need is these numbers. I'm counting by 1 fifth. So 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths. It's that fourth one out that tells you the period, right? Because this is going to go to the high, and then the middle, and then back to the low. So I now know that the period is 4 fifths. That's great, because then I can use that formula again, b equals 2 pi divided by the period, dividing by 4 fifths is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal by 5 fourths. Again, I've got some canceling here, and it looks like the final b value comes out to be 5 pi over 2. My amplitude is clearly 20, which means my a is going to be negative 20. I know it'll be negative because of the reflection. And so once again, I think I'm done. It's going to be negative 20. That covers the reflection and the amplitude. We're doing cosine. And the b we got was 5 pi over 2. So 5 pi over 2x. And we're finished. And then lastly, number 13, also similar. The only thing we're told here is the coordinates of this point, point 15, comma 14. Well, the 14 is wonderfully helpful, because I think now we know the amplitude of this function is clearly 14. I can see that it's the valley and the hill. So I know that that's reflected sine. If we can just get the period, I think we'll be all set. Well, I know this is 0.15 here. That is the third tick mark of the four tick marks that we always draw, which means I can get the first one by simply dividing 0.15 by 3. And if you divide that by 3, you get 0.05. Now I know what I'm counting by. I'm counting by 0.05. So this one would be 0.10 and then 0.15, and then 0.20. That's the number I needed. Now I know the period is 0 0.2. The b value is simply 2 pi divided by that number, divided by the period. Maybe it would be easier to think of 0 0.2 as a fraction. It's 2 tenths, which reduces to 1 fifth. And dividing by 1 fifth is the same thing as multiplying by 5. And so my b value is going to come out to be 10 pi. I can see that the amplitude is 14. Because of the reflection, the a value will be negative 14. And so here's my equation. y equals negative 14, reflected sine, amplitude of 14, sine of 10 pi x. And that's the answer.